concern. But you know what? It's not over because there's also the feds. That was a state level settlement. There's also the feds, the federal government. They're going after Deutsche Bank on this too. And when the feds get you, that's when things can really start to add up. For example, Deutsche Bank got nailed just in December for a totally different thing. Deutsche Bank got nailed in December by the feds for their shady illegal mortgage practices that led up to the financial collapse in this country. And the fine there, and the deal with the feds was not some millions of dollars or tens of millions of dollars or even hundreds of millions of dollars. Their fine there was a seven billion dollar fine, billion with a B. That was for their mortgage scheme. On that Russian money, money laundering scheme that Deutsche Bank already got caught for, the state part of it might be settled for $630 million, but the federal case is still open, still being pursued by the feds. And you know who's been pursuing the federal case against Deutsche Bank? Preet Bharara, who was just fired as the federal prosecutor in New York when the Trump Justice Department moved suddenly and without warning to remove all the U.S. attorneys around the country on Friday, uh, including Preet Bharara, even though both President Trump himself and Attorney General Jeff Sessions himself had previously told Preet Bharara he could stay on the job. And we reported on, on Friday night, you know, that, that other presidents have replaced lots of U.S. attorneys or all the U.S. attorneys before. But nobody has ever fired all the U.S. attorneys the way the Trump folks did on Friday night. It called them in the afternoon on Friday, told all the U.S. attorneys, all without warning, that they were all fired immediately. They needed their desks cleaned out and they needed their keys turned in by midnight. Get out. It's never happened like that before. Why the rush? Why the rush? And why Preet Bharara? Why is he included after you'd given him a personal assurance that he was staying on? That federal investigation into Russian money laundering by Deutsche Bank, that's one of any number of open investigations uh, in the Justice Department that has just had a wrench thrown in those works by those sudden firings of all the U.S. attorneys on Friday. But looking at the pre Perara firing, looking at this, 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 this shock to the justice system that the, administ the Trump administration just levied, Deutsche Bank is a particularly sensitive subject. Deutsche Bank is a particularly sensitive subject of investigation for this president for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, the former chairman of Deutsche Bank, uh, he left in the middle of all this scandal at his bank. He ended up landing very softly, though, at the Bank of Cyprus. Bank of Cyprus is itself a bank that has been in lots of hot water for Russian money laundering accusations. The Ch Deutsche Bank chairman was installed as chairman of the Bank of Cyprus uh, by the major shareholders of the Bank of Cyprus. Major shareholders of the Bank of Cyprus include this Russian oligarch. They call him the King of Fertilizer. He's now becoming famous in this country for having inexplicably paid Donald Trump $95 million for a single house. It's the single largest price ever paid for a house in the United States. He paid Donald Trump $95 million for that property, even though Trump himself had only paid $41 million for it a few years earlier. Why did a Russian oligarch pay Donald Trump over $50 million over and above what Trump had paid for that property? We still don't know. The king of fertilizer reportedly never set foot in the property. He certainly never lived there. He has since torn it down. But Donald Trump pocketed over $50 million in that one sale with that Russian oligarch, who's a major shareholder in the Bank of Cyprus, which has been done and held up the on King. Russian money laundering allegations uh, over the years. And now, um, in terms of the Bank of Cyprus, uh, there is one American um, who, it's, uh, who, who is involved in that bank. The one American who is a major shareholder of the Bank of Cyprus, and until recently was its vice chairman, um, is our new Commerce Secretary longtime Donald Trump friend, Wilbur Ross. So the Deutsche Bank chairman landing there with the guy who inexplicably gave Donald Trump $50 million and Donald Trump's commerce secretary, that makes Deutsche Bank a little bit of a sensitive subject. The other reason Deutsche Bank is a sensitive subject for federal investigation at this point is because the president himself owes more money to Deutsche Bank than any other single lender in the world. President Trump is in hock to Deutsche Bank to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. Deutsche Bank is the largest known lender to Trump's businesses. So summarily removing the prosecutor going after Deutsche Bank, that has personal implications for this president. 
Um, but, but that's not all, because it's not just him, it's his, it's, it's his family. This is the Waldorf Astoria. It's a big, fancy, stately hotel in New York City, emphasis on stately. Uh, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations always has a living suite at the Waldorf Astoria. Heads of state from all over the world, when they come to New York to do uh, business at the U.N., they stay at the Waldorf Astoria when they're here. The president of the United States stays at the Waldorf Astoria when he comes to New York for the U.N. or for any other business, or at least that used to be the case. That stopped in 2015 after a Chinese company bought the Waldorf, a company called Unbang. Anbang has uh, murky ownership that nobody can ascertain. There are widespread suspicions that Anbang is a tool of the Chinese government. And when Anbang bought the Waldorf Astoria and started rewiring it, <laughs> U.S. national security agencies deduced that they would no longer be confident that the American president could stay there without being bugged. And so the U.S. president no longer stays at the Waldorf Astoria, even before we got a U.S. president who has his own place in New York. Anbang uh, started off as a car yeah, insurance right. company in China, but they somehow became a gazillion dollar global <coughs> behemoth and they started buying properties all over the world, particularly in the United States. During the Obama administration, some of Anbang's purchases were reviewed on national security <coughs> grounds. Again, because this company appears to be <coughs> front for the Chinese government and you can't have foreign governments owning just anything in the United States. For example, this is the Hotel del Coronado in San Diego, which is lovely. Lovely spot, historic hotel. It's right, right on San Diego Bay. But look at the Hotel Del Coronado on a map. There's the Hotel Del Coronado. On one side is the Coronado Beach Dog Park, which looks lovely. I was looking at it on satellite view today. Right on the other side of it, oh, a Navy base. <laughs> it's right next to a Navy base. And so when Anbang, this country linked to the Chinese government, wanted to buy that hotel, really, right next to the naval base? The Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States blocked that purchase on national security grounds. Well, now the Obama administration is gone. The Trump administration oh is in God. effect. And now Anbang, this Chinese company, wants to do a huge new deal. Uh, they want to buy, number of the beast, forgive me, 666 Fifth Avenue. When 666 Fifth Avenue was sold in 2007 for $1.8 billion, it was the most expensive sale of a single building ever in the United States. Anbang just started shopping around a deal to buy it now for more than a billion dollars over that price from 2007. They're valuing it at $2.85 billion for a single building. I believe that would make it the most expensive building in North America. That huge inflation in price, over a billion dollars more than the last time it was bought, that would result in a huge payout for the people who bought it back in 2007. If this deal goes through, the people who bought it back in 2007 are now going to sell it to this Chinese company, they are going to make off like bandits. And the people who bought it in 2007 are... No way. Hey, remember Jared? Are you fucking kidding me? The Kushner family. The Kushner real estate empire. And this new offer just unveiled by Anbang, which is believed to be tied to the Chinese government, the Kushners are looking at walking away with $400 million. Holy in including some really inexplicable, super nice sweeteners to the deal, like a $250 million loan that the Kushners have outstanding on the property from their last refi effort. Whoa. Part of this deal with Anbang would make the Kushners, they've got a $250 million loan. They'd only have to pay back 50 of it. Ooh, it's an 80% off sale. Everything must go. Wow. This would be a massive purchase, though. Way bigger than the Hotel Del Coronado. But like the Hotel Del Coronado or any other major purchase by a company like this, this would have to be approved by the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States isn't an obscure committee. Its members are basically the whole cabinet. Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Treasury, Secretary of Homeland Security, Secretary of Commerce, etc. cetera. Uh, yeah, sorry, actually, this would be the old Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States. That's who was on it during the Obama administration. Now it's the Trump administration in effect. So now this is the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States that will be evaluating whether or not Jared's family gets $400 million. Oh hey, look, it's Wilbur Ross from the Bank of Cyprus with the guy who paid Donald Trump $50 million extra for the... 
Two days before the Trump administration decided to surprise fire all the U.S. attorneys with no notice, get your things, clean out your desk, be out by midnight, been out by midnight, turn in your keys. Two days before that, on Wednesday of last week, a group of watchdog organizations wrote to Preet Bharara as the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, and they asked him, based on his jurisdiction, to please look into whether or not the president was illegally receiving payments from foreign governments through his continuing ownership stake in the Trump Organization. John Conyers, top Democrat on the Judiciary Committee, he's now written to the Justice Department to ask for a list of all pending Justice Department investigations that involve members of the Trump administration, members of the Trump transition, members of the Trump campaign, or the Trump Organization. He says he wants that list of investigations so we can understand the full implications of this weekend's firings of the federal prosecutors. Were any of those prosecutors fired? because of ongoing investigations into the Trump campaign or the Trump organization or the Trump administration. We don't know why the Trump administration decided to fire all the U.S. attorneys in the way they did on Friday with no warning, with apparently no preparation, with no replacements lined up to nominate for those positions. We particularly don't know why the president did a 180, did an about face, and decided to throw out the U.S. attorney who has jurisdiction over things like mm, Russian money laundering and the Trump business empire. But just one last point to chew on here. The Trump administration demanded, surprise, demanded the resignation of all the U.S. attorneys on Friday afternoon. Pre Barrara didn't do it. They asked for the resignations from all the U.S. attorneys. Preet Bharara did not do it. He knew at the time, we all knew, that the president had the power to remove him and that by standing up and saying, I'm not going to resign, you're going to have to fire me, ultimately, the president would fire him. He knew that's how it would work out. But because Preet Bharara didn't resign, because he took that stand and he did not submit his resignation when he was asked for it on Friday, because he said, you're going to have to fire me, and then they had to go through the process of firing him. I mean, there was no suspense as to what the outcome was going to be. There was no suspense as to whether or not he'd be allowed to keep his job. He knew he'd have to go. But because of the way he did it, because he didn't resign, because he made them fire him, he delayed the process. He didn't get fired. He didn't get removed from office until Saturday afternoon. By insisting that he would not resign and that they'd have to fire him, Preet Bharara bought himself, as best as I can tell, about 24 hours and 29 minutes. 24 and a half extra hours in office once he knew they were coming for him. So as you think about what pending investigations might have been rooted through that office in New York, Trump campaign, Trump transition, Trump administration, Trump organization. Oh, and all the banks in the world. What do you think Preet Bharara did with that last 24 hours once he knew they were coming for him? Filed it? Stay with us. Say, Carl.